Hello everyone. This is going to be my setup of the PikaSim Flight Simulator to use it for control line simulation. When you first download the program and the first time you open it up, you'll see a screen like this. It will have your free fly and your challenge. Now, in all the time I've done this, I've never used the challenge, so I'll just ignore that and we'll do free fly. You'll have a preloaded glider program, a preloaded powered trainer program, or you can select your own, which is what we will do. Several aircraft are available, but there are only three control line. There is an extra 300. There is Igor Berger's Um, Max B, which is a precision aerobatic type, and then there is George Aldrich's Peacemaker, which is a combat plane and very squirrely, so we're just going to avoid that for now. Well, let's go ahead and do the extra 300. So I select that, and it'll ask us what kind of scenery do you want to use. We can do my favorites, which are the Flatland Panoramic a meadow panoramic or one that is something like a soccer field next to a school. For this demonstration we'll just go ahead and do the meadow panoramic. So we select that. Oh, sorry, the flatland panoramic. It will load it up. You'll see you have your plane sitting there and you'll notice that in the upper left there is a little zoom window. In the bottom right and left there are simulated radio control transmitter sticks. So we don't need any of those. So we'll go to the control setup. So the first one we'll go to advanced for options one. Select the language that we are most comfortable with. For me it's English. We will deselect zoom view which will make that box in the upper left disappear. If I wanted to do 3D and use this with my phone, I could select enable stereoscopy, but we will not do that at this time. We're going to set this up for our computer uh, screen. In my case, we're going to be doing it on a Windows 7 machine. Next, We'll come down to air brakes with stick forward. We're going to make that unchecked because we don't want air brakes while we're flying our control line plane. We have shape opacity and stick opacity. We set those to zero and those simulated uh, radio control transmitter sticks will disappear for us. And then lastly on this we want to make our foot per second unchecked. That would normally show your rise and fall in feet per second which is handy for gliders but for control line we don't need it. Options 2 we will select that and again go to advanced. We want to make sure we select free fly on startup. That way every time you open up this program it will restart with our previously selected plane and background. We don't have to reload them each time we start up the program. Then we go to Aeroplane, which has our extra 300. Advanced. Then we're going to first set our ballast left, which will be the same as our tip weight that we put onto our left wing or our outboard wing. Now here I'm making a mistake. I'm selecting ballast forward. You don't want to do that. And your own setup make your ballast left around 0.3 meters. That's what I meant to do. I just made a mistake here. I also want to drop my drag multiplier down to about 0.5. Size multiplier and mass multiplier I move up to around 1.3. That slows the plane down a little bit and gives you more line tension or at least I find it does. 
then I'm going to say no I don't want to show button one that's just a little button on the screen that you would click on with your mouse to start smoke floating since we're not going to be using a mouse we'll leave that blank and you can see it's set up for control line with flaps now for physical offset left that's like your rudder selection so we want there on 0.73 so now we're going to do our scenery we want just a little bit of wind so 0.5 meter per second is good and for wind bearing that's going to tell us where we start the plane from now personally I like to start the plane off with the plane directly downwind on my circle. I'll set my wind bearing to 90 degrees which will give us downwind. If you're one of those people who wants to take off with the wind you can set it to 180 degrees so the wind is coming on the tail of the plane. So at 180 degrees you'd be taking off with the wind. But the field I fly at we usually launch with the plane directly downwind so I'm saying it 90. Now runway type is something I wish I'd learned a long time ago. I had a problem with always getting too low and crashing the plane because I didn't have a really good ground reference. Then I later found out if I set runway type to circle I have a little reference circle around the outside of the perimeter and so long as I stay above that little white line which is my reference for the runway I don't get too low. Next I'm going to go to controller and again I'm going to make sure that I don't have my throttle as brakes. I don't want any brakes on my control line plane. Next I want to give a little bit more exponential for my pitch setting so it's a little softer around neutral. I usually like around 1.667 but still nice and controllable just a little softer around neutral so I don't over control too much while I'm trying to fly level. Next is the joystick for whatever kind of joystick input you want, I used a USB joystick I modified for a control line handle. Make sure it says enable joystick, which it initially is not selected. We want to select that. And when you plug it in, it will tell you which joystick is available. For me, joystick zero is what's available with my particular controller. Then I look for which input changes as I move the stick for my pitch and this one is joystick zero so I will move my handle to the neutral position and press centered so it knows my handle is neutral then I'll give it full up handle but since this simulates a RC transmitter full up in the handle would be the stick all the way back or all the way down. So with the handle up I select press when left or down. Then I move the control handle all the way down which on a RC transmitter would be the same as if I moved the stick up. So I select press right or up. So now I have my control handle calibrated for up and down in relation to what a transmitter stick would look like. So now that I've made all my changes, I have to save the changes I've made. I go to save, and I call this a tutorial, so I'll just type in a capital T for tutorial, and hit OK. Then I'll just go back real quick and look at save to make sure that, yes, it really did save. Yep, there's my T selection, so it's been saved. So now I'll go back and do that for all my other areas I've made a change to. So for controller, T, 
T for tutorial. Then I'll go back to my scenery. And save that one with my capital T for tutorial. And then I'll do that for all my other selections. Now that I've saved everything, I can go back, it will load my changes. You can see I have my plane sitting in my scenery. My little zoom box is missing from the upper left, and my simulated control house are gone. I give it throttle and I take off. I can give it up handle and I can do my loops. I can fly inverted with my down, do my outside loops. So you can see I have full control. I can do loops, rolls, I can do the occasional wing over. And then I just go ahead and pull back my throttle and I'll just make a nice gentle landing. And that's how I set it up for control line in PicaSim. Thanks for watching.